Hello! Today's video is going to be about the Auric micro disc. Uh, before I start uh, with the subject, I'm going to first present two things. Uh, the first is after I made uh, my uh, air informatic video, I actually managed to find uh, the actual tape, one of the tape I was missing, so Le Millionaire. And so you can see it's relatively good shape and uh, the user manual for businessman uh, which is really necessary because the game is quite not simple so you have uh, organigrams, uh, matrix, uh, information about uh, social climate, outside events, appearance of uh, competitor, uh, national strike, marketing decision financial decisions so that's quite a large manual um, some information about uh, that's interesting uh, so the two sides have been rec recorded at the different levels the first with a minus 4 dB and the second after signal equalization uh, apparently because they had problems uh, for some people loading things so there you go two more elements that should go to the previous video but I'm not going to redo it. And another thing I, I got is that uh, there is currently, as of today, uh, two Auric MCP40 uh, printers uh, on eBay uh, but not the Atmos uh, version, red and black, which I presented the other day. That's uh, the Auric one version and one is actually boxed. Uh, so you uh, can see, I ask the the seller, if he could take some uh, nice photos of it. And I love this uh, timeless technology from Auric Product International. Yeah, 1983. So, the micro disc, this is that one. Um, this is not the only uh, floppy drive system available on the machine. Uh, and many of the other here on this page actually were released before the Auric micro disc. Because like most uh, of Auric uh, products, uh, they manage to have many uh, problems with the production and uh, things we are not ready. So, Cumana, by drive, managed to, to release before. And uh, that one, Jasmine, uh, released by the TRAN, T-R-A-N company in France, uh, were available, at least in France, on the market uh, way before the micro disc was released. And here we have a white model which goes with the Auric one and the red and black model which goes with the Atmos. As far as I know that one has never been actually released. Uh, we can see it on some advertisement but that's about it. I'm not sure they were ever uh, Auric one version. From a price point of view uh, this thing was about two to three times the price of the actual computer at some point. Uh, which is also why there is not uh, that much uh, Auric uh, software on Tropies. And the Cumana drive is an interesting case because it's technically a clone of that one. So it has a slightly different um, uh, chip inside, but it's uh, register and pin compatible. So if you have a Cumana disk drive system, you can use uh, Auric uh, micro disk uh, software. As long as it's in the same uh, format, because Contrary to many other computers, this one, like uh, the Amstrad, was using 3-inch floppies. So, many of you probably know the 3.5-inch uh, format. Been used on Atari ST, on Amiga, here you can see SimCity, Rampage, Populous. Um, so these ones are double density, and these are standard uh, PC. Uh, 144. But uh, no, I'm not talking about these ones. I'm not talking about this one either. So that one was a uh, five quarter inch uh, floppy, which I won at the demo party. And these ones are some uh, Commodore 64 uh, source code. So, 
which deserves a floppy name because yes, on the came with a dust uh, dust cover. What I'm talking about are these ones, which the most uh, known are the Amsoft, uh, which were the brand of uh, Amstrad. But there are also a lot of uh, Maxell uh, on, on the market. So the, the actual name is CF2, uh, compact floppy, um, not sure what the two means. On here I have uh, two which are still uh, in package, so I have no idea if they actually work. Uh, so far it's been quite a hit on me in terms of uh, will they work. So the 3 inch uh, floppies goes with obviously a specific uh, floppy drive. So this is uh, a Sankyo model. Uh, I believe on the Amstrad there are different ones which suffered from uh, terrible belt uh, problems. Uh, on the Eric we have other issues but belt generally is not the case. So that one is a double sided model. Uh, that's the top head. At the bottom is the bottom head. Not sure if we can see under. And an easy way to know if you have a double sided or not is that you take a floppy, it goes in, no problem. It does not want to release the button, uh, which means it's a double sided drive. Uh, single sided drive, you need to uh, side A, side B. So that's a good indication. So, uh, there is a num most computers originally had uh, single-sided uh, versions, uh, but after a while uh, they got replaced by double-sided. So that one, if you want the reference, it's a HFD 305D, and I believe D means double-sided. Uh, an important thing to know is that this looks like a standard Molex connector as you have on PC, don't plug blindly uh, a PC power supply on that one because uh, there were uh, some different uh, rules at the time. Not everything was standardized. So you will see that you have the same cable with the yellow, red and black connectors, but uh, sometimes the cables uh, voltage on ground has been swapped and you don't want to swap the 12 with the 5 or the plus 12 with the minus 12 or the ground with the 5. It, it is a bad karma. So, I'm only going to talk about that one, uh, which had a number of uh, operating system risks for it. Uh, the Cumana also had some different variants. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Jasmine on by drive on disk 2, mostly because I never had any of these and I don't actually know how they work. Uh, one note, though, is that uh, these one by default are not compatible with a micro disk, but they use uh, floppy drive controller, also from a Western Digital, which is close enough that you can actually make uh, loading routines that work on both systems. Uh, so I believe uh, the recent demos on the games like Blake 7 may actually be loading on Jasmine, but uh, I don't know anyone who had one, so no idea. The bike drive was an interesting thing. Uh, it's basically they made a universal disk system uh, that they sold relatively cheap, for what I was told. And apparently all the magic was in the cable, which, has, which was uh, system specific. And they had their own operating system, BDDOS. And that one is a very specific system, it was, so it works on all Zurich, but it was used uh, on uh, in Bulgaria, uh, on the rest of the uh, uh, Soviet Union, uh, to go with a private system. So basically what they did is that they used uh, Apple II, uh, disk to uh, five uh, inch uh, floppies, on their, their own uh, version, uh, the Bobby Air DOS on the DOS 8D. So let's look at what the micro drive Micro disk, sorry, looks like. We have a 
another one here. So the question is, what is the difference between the left one and the yellow one? Uh, yellow because that one has probably been uh, placed with a smoker. Uh, well, the main difference is that that one is a master drive and that one is a slave drive. And you can know that because that one does not have a, a button here. Why? That one, normally it has a, a push button, a bit was more practical, uh, which means that that one has a controller board inside. And you can also see that uh, it has another cable, which you can't remove. And knowing if it's a master or slave is super important. So I unscrewed it so you can see inside. In uh, this version, you have the drive at the bottom and you have the controller board on top uh, because the Auric itself is not able to use this drive. Uh, if you are on the Auric Atmos, to use that one, you need to have one like that, one master, and up to three slaves. Uh, technically, the slave is just uh, the drive with a power cable on the... So you don't even need the box. You can take uh, this drive here, you just connect that here, there, here, and it's working. Uh, no complex thing to do. And when you use the operating system, that one is a drive R, drive B, and then you can have C and D. And they don't even have to be all uh, three inch. The controller board uh, is totally fine with uh, at least uh, four type of drive as long as they are sugar compatible. So three inch, uh, 3 inch, 3.5, 525, and if you can't find some eight, eight inch floppy in the right format, they will probably work. Now, why would you want to do that? I don't know. Uh, having the secondary drive as a 325, uh, uh, 3.5, sorry, instead of three, is actually interesting because the main problem with these floppies is that they do not have the same capacity as the 3.5 floppies. Uh, so that one is HD, you can store 144 on it. But the standard one using reusable on the Auric, you can store uh, up to 720 because you can record on uh, 80 tracks. On these things, you can only record on 40 tracks. If you try to write uh, farther, you're going to damage the floppy on the, on the drive. So in total, 720. 360 kilobyte, give or take. You can cheat a bit with the formatting, but yeah, basically half the capacity. Another super important parameter is that if you try to connect that one on a Telestrat, you are going to blow either the Telestrat or the drive. And the reason is, as you can see here, it's expansion bus printer and there is a third one which is called micro disk because the Telestrat has a controller board inside already uh, so a controller board on top of a controller board equal bad bad thing uh, so on a Telestrat you should only plug a slave drive never a master drive this is very important uh, and there is another issue with the Telestrat why not it which is, as you can see, there is a connector here, and that one looks a lot like that one, uh, except it's not. If you have an actual power supply for the Telestrat, let's try to do that, like this thing here, as you can see, it has two connectors. Let me get it. <laughs> two connectors which are very very similar except one is normal and one has been cut and that one actually had a small white T painted on it and the reason is 
Telestrat uh, power supply for mic, recut cable minus 12 volt uh, to connect on the Telestrat, the other one to connect on the micro disc. Basically, uh, the genius who designed the system managed to make it so uh, the connections you have here are not the same. Uh, one uh, provide a minus 12 instead of the ground. Uh, so if you use a Telestrat one on the micro disc or the micro disc on the Telestrat, you may end up uh, burning some chips. Uh, uh, that already happened to that one. That's why it has uh, the sticker. Uh, so it's been repaired. I think it was some uh, run chip who burnt. So yeah, that's a major major issue. So, that is a French uh, Cédoric uh, manual. So, as I said earlier, uh, there were a bunch of uh, operating systems for the Eric. So the first one was Eric DOS, uh, there is uh, XT DOS, ROM DOS, and ROM DOS, which were made by Opelco. Uh, and then later on, we had Cédoric, uh, so which is that one, and Stratced, which is basically Cédoric for the Telestrat. Um, the most annoying thing is that uh, all these operating systems are complementary. Uh, Cedric, for example, uh, has been patched by uh, people uh, later on to add features, but the standard Cedric does not know the concept of folders. While Rondos on ROMDOS, I believe uh, you can create subfolders. So there are huge restrictions, but you can store things. Now, of course, there is not a lot of uh, space on the floppy, so that's not dramatic, but that's still annoying. So here you have a presentation of, uh, of the system. So as I said, you can have uh, lecture, so the drive A, and then up to C and D, and you need one power supply for each to drive. Then you have the structure of the floppy, some indication about uh, small uh, thing to push up and down to put a read-only or not. <coughs> write protect and uh, the reference manual, uh, how to get uh, the directory. Um, there is a bunch of interesting functions. Uh, one of the most interesting things uh, with Cedric is that it actually adds some cool uh, uh, basic instructions. So you can uh, draw more things. You have the current of mem copy, uh, which I use in my encounter uh, revamp. And here we have what looks like uh, an original Cedric version 101. So yeah, no, nothing special. On here, a bunch of uh, floppies as I was uh, doing uh, some time ago. Uh, I will show some of them after. And while I'm at it, I also happen to have uh, two floppies of operating system, the TDOS and FTDOS, uh, which has nothing to do with the micro disk. They're actually a Jasmine uh, drive. And I'm sorry for the drilling noise. So, let's see how that works. So I'm going to reassemble that and uh, then I'm going to load a few things to show you how that works. So, we are back and let's see if we can get things running.
So that was uh, Auric uh, standard demo. So that one is Cedric 3.0. Okay, so that one which has a, a demo version of a game, Krillis. Uh, yeah, something I totally forgot to talk about. Uh, here you can see Atmos, Rome in RAM overlay, Auric Run, Rome in RAM overlay. So, as I already said at some point, is that here we have written Auric Atmos 48K, but this machine actually has 64K of RAM. Uh, so what happens is that when you boot the system, uh, the disk controller board takes over, it has its own 8 kilobyte uh, ROM, uh, which is used by the Auric to boot. That's the thing that displays no operating system uh, on disk or insert disk. And when a compatible uh, floppy is found, then the DOS loads uh, boots on the floppy. But if it's a DOS, like in Cedric, what it does is that it transfers the 16 kilobyte uh, footprint of the operating system in the top 16 kilobyte uh, because it can disable the, the ROM. Uh, there is circuitry in that which can actually disable the ROM basic. Which also means that using this trick, you can load a 16 kilobyte ROM arbitrary. So you can have an Auric one load the Atmos ROM. Technically, it will be in RAM and vice versa. So you can use that to have compatibility with the previous software. Uh, an obvious issue is that uh, it's in RAM, not in ROM, which means that you can overwrite it, which is a, a problem. Uh, but that's a, a very fancy thing, which is also why many of our demos, um, uh, like uh, like that one, um, are you requiring uh, the floppy drive? Uh, not necessarily because they need to load things, but because that gives us 16 additional kilobytes. So let's see, create this demo game. So that one is a slime, uh, an actually old, new old game. Uh, it's one of the first uh, Ori game made uh, with uh, the ancestor of the OSDK, uh, when uh, Fabrice Frances, the author of Euphoric, uh, started uh, making uh, uh, software development cross-compilation for, uh, for the Ori. Uh, so that one is about destroying uh, industrial plants which are uh, putting goo everywhere. So the idea is to go through all the factories and it get more and more difficult. Crates are nice. So if I take that one, it's adding goo everywhere. And obviously, the more slime there is, the harder it is to play. Yes, barrels spray slime. Aren't you dead yet? So obviously it gets more and more complicated and after a while you easily get stuck in your own traces. So 
toxic slime considered harmful. So these ones are the entry of the mini game compo 2003 on the Eric. Uh, I'm not going to play uh, any of the other game, but uh, 4K Kong is mine. So indulge me. I guess you get the idea. And then we have Zip on Zap. Which is a grid game by Jonathan Bristow, also known as Twilight. That's uh, Soon Tracker music, uh, three channel Soon Tracker. Uh, while it's playing, the keyboard is not very reactive. So that's why I had to play a number of times. So let's play QAZX. This happens. So that one is a strategy game. Uh, it's particularly cool with two players. After a while it gets quite tricky. So I'm not sure if you notice but uh, some of the bricks have two symbols and when you pass on it it gets one. That one has two, which is why I can do that. Which means I can do that. And then this. And after a while it gets kind of complicated. And I believe I did in the wrong order. We will see. So you're not obliged to get all the thing, but you need to be at zero there. 
So let's see. Yes. Ah. Oh, and I was missing some. So that's zip on zap. And then we have the Auric uh, Giga demo. Uh, so that one has a problem. Uh, it does not have sound. And it loads very slowly. Uh, it was our 2001 demo. Um, so the reason why it does not have any music is related to what I was saying about the overlay. Um, what we are doing most of the time for the demos is that uh, we have our own mini loader which fits on the very top of memory and uses something like uh, one or two kilobyte max and we can use the uh, rest of the 16 kilobyte to do things like for example uh, have music uh, but we had a problem in this uh, version of the demo and uh, that was the first version of the floppy loader and it did not work so we had to revert to the uh, Cedoric loader which is very very slow and does not allow to play music at the same time and uh, even if we could have played the music at the same time we did not have the memory anymore to store it which is why this demo was did not have uh, music which is very boring but I'm going to leave that uh, running and I'm going to bring uh, the project I had been working last year. So, as you can see, these things are not super pretty. Uh, we had some old uh, label sticker we put on it. Uh, and uh, I wanted to have some actual Auric disc games that looks like actual Auric official um, games. Um, like we had some other things like Twilight stuff uh, and we had some uh, attempt like this uh, Blake's uh, 7 uh, floppy but it was very ad hoc and it was not really standardized we were doing that uh, per project so I started uh, with the idea of what if we had some actual uh, new branded Oryx software so that magnetics not sure if you can see solids. So all these games are double-sided. Uh, so I made it so uh, it's obvious you have to put it like that or not like that. Blake 7. So to compare with uh, the original uh, prototype. Yeah. This is very difficult. I'm still waiting for my monitor uh, uh, on the viewfinder of the camera. It is very difficult. Uh, Atanor. Uh, I, I do have an original of uh, Atanor uh, by Eric Safar. Uh, but uh, the floppy I received basically looked like a floppy like that with a label on top printed on a matrix printer. It is not awesome. So I think that one looks better. Uh, why should you use something like that when you can use something like a Cedric Master Disk? Which I think looks much better. And uh, I even made uh, a zip and zap uh, version. So I'm not booting any of these because there is no actual software on it. Uh, I had the problem uh, writing uh, on these floppies, uh, so that's going to be uh, another part of, of the project. And I also made some generic uh, uh, floppy for your own uh, personal project uh, with lines on, um, on the white hair so you can write. Now, the question is, how difficult is it to get these things? Well, it is not easy, and uh, you don't necessarily want to get the hassle to go to the 3-inch uh, drive. 
uh, I mean finding a stocks of uh, 3.5 inch it's easy finding stocks of working 3 inch floppies it's much more difficult uh, it, it's actually painful uh, but some people are still building controllers so that one is the blue edition the private AD Auric controller blue edition um, I had that one uh, a few years ago but uh, now and then there are some people uh, producing some new ones uh, an alternative solution is to use things like uh, uh, the Cumulus uh, floppy emulator which emulates both the controller board and the actual floppy drive uh, but if you have that you can also totally use something like HXC floppy emulator or GoTech uh, it's working, uh, working fine um, and uh, I guess uh, that's all I have